Who has a uh, sales team? Okay, a lot. Who would like to have a sales team? Okay, I think that's the rest of everybody. Okay, good. Because at some point, you got to duplicate yourself. Jeremy just talked about that. You got you to get to where you want to duplicate. If you're taking notes, I'm going to do a bunch of training real quick. Okay, very quick. Duplicate, because for me, I'm not really a keynote speaker per se. You know, I mean, half the time I'm learning how to do this as we're doing it, right? Because I believe in operating in a place of fear. I want to be outside of my comfort zone every second of the time. The moment, the moment I get comfortable up here, uh, something's wrong, right? I'm not doing it right. So for me, I would rather train. Uh, I'm, I'm a sales trainer. That's what I do. I love selling. Uh, you saw the video. I made 117 grand at 20, playing basketball, um, cold calling, cold door knocking, and fell in love with the industry. Started YouTube in five years ago and putting up videos. And literally, most people don't know this. For the first two years, I think it took two years to get like a thousand subscribers. You know, Justin Brock did that in like four days, probably. You know, for me, it was like no one was watching. Who's been watching my videos since 2015? 20, there you go. You're probably about it. 2016. 2017. All right. 2018. 2019. 2020. That'd be the rest of you. Okay, good. Awesome. So for me, I, I, I absolutely love training. To give you a little background real quick of why I decided to do the things that I'm doing now. A sales manager reached out to me when I was ha after I made nine grand in one of my first months selling life insurance. Door to door, no leads. I didn't know what a lead was. I didn't have a land in. I'm like, you know, how easy does he make it now? The, the six, nine Greek freak of marketing, man. Um, but for me, I had a sales manager reach out to me that lived, and he had some agents that lived four hours away from me up in northern Missouri. And he said, I've got two agents that are struggling. Can you come up and help them? First time I've ever been asked this, right? I'm 20, 21 maybe. I'm like, I'll try. You know, I don't know. I'll try. Drove up. We went out cold canvas door knocking. Who's ever been cold canvas door knocking? Like legit, no lead, just like, you know, you're knocking on the door and you're like, I hope they don't tackle me. You know, that was me. That was me as I started. And I spent about five, six, seven, eight hours with these two salespeople. Names were Greg and Hunter. Still remember them today. And as I was spending time with them out cold door knocking, we made a sale. And they get all hyped up. They're excited. They're, they're high, we're high-fiving. We're jumping around. They're like, dude, you made that look easy, man. Right? We go into another one. A couple doors later, make another sale. 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 From cold canvas door knocking. Five sales in probably five to eight hours. Training two newbies that hadn't made a sale in weeks. Did some additional training after to talk through what we learned about. Because I'm big on when I do something or when I see somebody do something, I want to take some time to like actually, we talked about, somebody talked about it earlier, actually review and evaluate what they just did so that I can actually start to apply it. It's one thing to watch a video. It's one thing to see somebody do something. It's one, it's one thing to hear somebody say something. But when you get to the point where you can actually start to role play and break it down and talk through it as a team, that's when those real breakthroughs start to happen, like in our office. And... I remember doing that with these agents, left the, 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 the apps with them, didn't take any commission, drove home four hours. And the whole time I was thinking when I was driving home is if I ever get the chance to do that again, I'm going to take it. I said, because I think I just found my real passion. Who's, who's had that moment of clarity where it's clicked for you, where you're like, holy freak, I know what I want to do the rest of my life. It happened to me in that moment. It happened to me in that moment. I learned quickly that my passion wasn't me making sales. I truly believe I could go out and make 50 grand during COVID, cold door knocking in, in freaking Montana. Like, I know I can. I'm not going to, but I know I could, right? Who's ever seen the show Un Undercover Boss? That's where they, dr or, or, okay, what about another one I like, Undercover Billionaire? Okay, so that's a newer one where they drop off a billion. This, this gave me a bunch of ideas. They drop off a billionaire in Erie, Pennsylvania with $100, a beat-up pickup truck, and a, and, and a cell phone, burner phone with no contacts. 
And he's got to build a one mil, uh, uh, he's going undercover. And he's got to build a business worth a million dollars in 90 days in a city he's never been to with no money, no network, no relationships, and no contacts. I watched that show a few weeks ago. Coach did too. I'm like, dang, dude, that got my attention. Who thinks they could do that? M million dollar company, 90 days from, and, and you start with a hundred bucks. Like the first three weeks, he's, he's eating ramen, sleeping in his truck, and it's like 18 degrees, killing himself, and trying to flip money and tires and everything else just so he can eat, just so he can sleep. And he's got to have a million dollar company in 90 days? Who's going to go watch that show after this because of that? Okay, good, good. I, I fell in love with that, right? I fell in love with that. That day with those agents, though, I found my passion. My, my, my passion is not me going out and making a sale. I get more gratification after seeing other people make a sale. Mm -hmm. Who's heard of my no callback clothes that I ethically stole and gave credit to Brian Tracy for? Okay. I get, I get agents that message me on a daily basis about that, that they've tried it, they've used it, they didn't think it would work, and oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting, like, this is working. I'm getting some feedback from this. For me, I didn't think that we would have people from around the world reaching out to us on YouTube saying, I struggled. I was about to quit. I was broke. Started watching your videos. Picked up a nugget. And I'm not going to quit anymore. I, that's, that's what it's about for me, you know. Like, the, you know, the, the, the money, the events, everything else, that's what it's about for me. That's what it's really about, right? When, when you're able to, like when, when, like when um, several speakers have talked about, right, being of service, helping somebody. We talked about this morning, taking some of that money and giving it away, right? Who's already done that, by the way? Good. I know Joe has. That's awesome. Good, good, good. That's awesome. That's cool. I want to continue to over-deliver, to get more attention, to put out more content than anybody else in the insurance industry. Because I want, my, one of my goals, I write down goals. Who, who, who else writes down goals every single day? I have a daily power five that I do that I'm gonna give you real quick. Five things I do to kick off my day every single day. Who's heard this? Okay, some of us, a lot of us have not. Here it is. Number one, I wake up before, and they're not, they're not rocket science. I wake up before 6 a.m. Number two, I get a good workout in. Get my energy right. I believe, Marshall talked about earlier, sales is transferring certainty from you into them. If my energy sucks, is that going to help me transfer certainty into them? No. So I get to get workout in, right? My energy's got to be right. I don't want to have a bad day. I will spend time training, audiobook, videos, books, learning, trying to get better at something, right? You've always heard the best time to pick up something or learn something is in the morning, right? So that's what I'm doing. That's the third piece. Fourth is I'm writing down my goals every single morning. Then the fifth one, who knows the fifth one? Come on, Marlon Faulkner. Come on, Marlon Faulkner. Cold shower. Some of you are like, dude, you're weird. Okay, that's nuts. Few reasons why. There's, it's, it, there's some health benefits, right? It's good for you, I guess. Good for your skin, I hear. That's not why I do it. Okay. It's good, though. It wakes me the freak up to kick off my day. Who, who, who's ever got to the office 9 a.m. and you're like, a zombie? <laughs> like, and that's how most of my team shows up to the office. You know? Then I'm like, all right, we're going to do some push-ups. <laughs> and the third reason is I want to force myself to do things that I don't want to do. Since we started throwing 8% Nation, I started working out more consistently. I have a better relationship with my wife. We have a larger following. We help more agents now. And two years ago, I didn't know how to throw a birthday party. <laughs> and let's be honest, my team is actually the one doing all the work here. So if you recognize that and appreciate that, Join me, and let's give my team a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. They, 
they, they, try to, they, they try to make it to where I don't have to do anything at all. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so I finish with a cold shower, right? It wakes me up. Force me to do something I don't want to do. I like operating in a place of fear. I like operating in a, in, in a place of being uncomfortable, getting out of my comfort zone. When I do a lot of coaching and consulting, I force people to do things they don't want to do. And I let them know it's optional. But if you don't do it, we're done working together. Because I guarantee you, when we spend time together at any point in the future, even if it's just this, that's cool. Doing those things has forced me to think bigger. It's forced me, like one of my goals right now every single morning is that I want to help every insurance agent in the world. That I want to leave a legacy on the insurance industry like no one ever has. That's a personal goal for me. It keeps me humble, keeps me focused. And if I could be that for other people, I'm happy to, right? And, and, and that's really what I want to do. That's what I love. That's what I love. All right, so I want to jump into some sales. Uh, who's going who's gonna to take a cold shower now? Shut up, Justin. No, you're not. <laughs> All right, okay. I want to jump into some sales training. Um, I want to throw in some stories and, and some of those things before. But I want to talk to people that have a sales team or people that want to have a sales team. Okay, I did a recent webinar on this topic. There was not very many team owners on it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to also add a spin to it for anybody that has a sales team or that wants to build a sales team. Okay, I'm going to give you seven things you need to know really quick. Seven things you need to know really quick in about seven minutes that you can immediately take away and apply to your sales team and get results and see results. Who wants those seven secrets in seven minutes? All right, good. Perfect, perfect. I saw some hands. I only heard a few people, though, so maybe we'll give three or four, or should we give all seven? I don't know. Okay. All right. Okay. Help me out, then. Let me hear it. Let, 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 me, let me hear it as we're almost done. The first one is we hire slow. I have bad handwriting, but it's not as bad as Jordan Belfort. I learned that quickly. I'm like, dude, I don't even know if you can see what you're writing, but it's good. It's good. Was we hire slow. We put someone through several interviews, and the first question we ask them when we're about to hire them is, what do you know about our company? If they did no research, or they're lazy, and we escort them to the door immediately. A total waste of time. Okay? We we'll also put them through a DISC assessment, a personality assessment, because I want to know their behavior. Okay? Well, the DISC is, is... I want to hire salespeople that have a leading letter. Their dominant letter is either a D or an I. D is like I'm driven. I'm a self-starter. I'm a risk taker. I'm aggressive, right? I'm personally 100 on a D. I is influential, social, good personality, but I can also influence people in making decisions and doing things, right? Who thinks that influence people in making decisions is, good and is important in sales, right? I'm a 90 there. S, I consider it more service-related steady, right? Customer service is the type of position we would do for that. And then sees more like conscientious, really computer work, analytical data, that kind of stuff, right? Most, some of our Facebook engineers. We put them through this. And if they have a leading letter of a D or I, when we're recruiting salespeople, we will, ask, we, we will invite them to a second interview where we will bring in a sales director to explain how working at our office has changed their life, this and that, and they're able to share their experiences, a testimonial, kind of like Silver did earlier, and they're able to share with them why they, why they are fortunate to get, a, get to work with us in our office. Okay, so the big key is I used to hire everyone. Now Andy does all the interviews, and, and, and we hire very slow. Very, very slow. We take our time, right? It's a privilege to be on our sales team. It's an absolute, it is, you know, they make phenomenal money. And, and at any point, if they don't view it as such, I don't want them working there, right? So we hire slow. We also fire fast as, as, as I move into that. If I'm seeing patterns that I, that, that, that's over and over within the first 24, 48, 72 hours, I'm cutting ties at that moment. There's no reason, if, if you're seeing it that early, you're, it's going to come up again. 
You know, and a lot of us are too afraid to be honest. Honest people, Judge and Matt just talked about that yesterday. Most of us are scared to be honest with people we work with. So we fire fast. We also have quotas in the first 15 days, 15 business days. If they don't hit them, hasta la vista, baby. Okay. Hire slow, fire fast. Third is we set expectations out of the gate. As I'm trying to figure out how to spell it. Okay, set expectations out of the gate. And that is to not, that's, that's not only activity numbers, dials. That's, you know, because, for example, we have an 8.30 all-team meeting to kick off every single day, 60, 70 people. Then from 8.40 to 9, and from 1.30 to 2, we have two sales-related trainings every single day, twice a day. If it's good enough to do it one day, it's good enough to do every day, right? So we do this every single day, two times a day, and we set the expectations that when you're in this meeting, you're gonna be paying attention, you're gonna be taking notes, you will, it, it, you, you're not gonna be late, you're not gonna be on your phone, you're not gonna talk to customers. Like if they're in the room and they're on the phone with a customer about to start a sales training, I will, and they don't get off, I will physically walk over. So sorry, I'll call you back in five minutes and hang up. I don't care if they're about, about to make the sale or not, I don't care. Because this time is the most important part of the day. And you've got to set the tone early. Most people do not set the tone early with their sales team. And they let people get away with stuff. And before you know it, they're in a rut. They're unmotivated. And you're like, oh, my gosh, man, I, I don't know what to do. Because none of my salespeople will freaking care. That was me two years ago. That will never be me again. So we set expectations up front. We also track their activity daily. We have leaderboards around the office tracking all their activity so that we know every second of every day what's going on. I want to know, I want to know, I want to know dials. I want to know conversations. I want to know talk time. I want to know sales and I want to know revenue. Okay. So we are literally tracking their activity constantly. We also have a white, we have a whiteboard really exactly like this in our office. And we keep track of their week on a whiteboard. Everybody's got to go up and put. So each day, this would be like Monday, Tuesday, and then we have a total box at the end. If you want, shoot me an email, Cody at Cody Askins. I'll send you a picture because this is not what it looks like, okay? We have them insert. We have them insert. Dials, conversations, sales, and money at the end of each day. They have to physically walk up before they leave and fill it out. Because who wants to walk up and do that every day? Nobody. Especially if this is the type of personality they are. They hate it, right? So again, we're tracking activity and then we can see daily numbers, weekly numbers, monthly numbers, the previous week, the previous month, and we're able to track that for every single rep in our office. Okay, so after tracking activity, we already talked about this briefly, we train every single day, but when we train, it's videos. Like I have a CA sales system that you've probably seen around that we released this year that has over 450 modules and quizzes and is specifically built for insurance sales teams to plug in and train every single day. And it's me on all the videos, as well as a monthly live Q&A that's group style for anyone that's a member of our cell system or any team or any, or, or any agent to actually get on and be specifically trained by me every month physically as well, not just video content. Okay, so we're training every day. We're watching videos. We're role playing. And like Jordan talked about in, in the fire, the little fire get together, it's something specific. It's something small. It's an objection. It's this phrase, it's how to ask for the business with this. It's the client says this, and what do you say? It's our intro pitch, so that when we get on the phone the first time, we're not rusty. Who's ever made a call, and you're like, dude, I, f I screwed that up. <laughs> I felt rusty, that sucked, and I hope I never do that again, right? We just lost money. You lost money, I lost money, and we're operating a business because we're not a charity because we want to make money, right? So we are improving every single day. They are getting better every single day. That's the point. Okay, then we jump into some energy activity. Jumping jacks, push-ups, squats, run around the building, something. 
Again, because I need their energy up. If they woke up at 7.30, they got to the office at 8.30, and, they, and, and that's pretty much, I, th- I mean, I consider that sleeping in, by the way. They get to the office, and maybe they haven't had coffee, or they're running late, or they're stressed out, or they're, you know, whatever. I need to wake them up. They can't, like, float through the day and finally wake up at 10, 11 o'clock. It's just, it's, it's dumb. So, energy activity, and then a little, uh, one, two, three cells, or they do like a Ric Flair or woo on Wednesdays. I don't know. They change it up. But something is like, and, 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 and I, like the people that came to the retreat, like how, was, how much was our cells room like freaking buzzing, man? Like it's, it's like the, we, got, we got music playing in the background to help the energy. Like the culture and, and the room is just, it's buzzing. It's, it's, it's fun. It's, it's like you no one wants to go to an office sit in a cubicle or in a random office and be all alone with no music, no supervision. Whether they say they don't want supervision or not, they do, I promise, because when they get supervision, they make more money. So like, you know, I don't know why they wouldn't, okay? So that's, so we train daily. Two more, real quick. We're gonna bring Nate up. We do a monthly P&L on every single salesperson. If I'm spending money on them in any way, I want to see if I lost money or made money. And if we lose money two months in a row on somebody, we let them go. Doesn't happen more than once. Pretty rare because of how structured our systems are in our office. So monthly P&L. If you want an example of that, Andy can probably get it to you. Okay. And then the last one is focus and urgency. For our marketing sales team, Landon just released an Xbox, new Xbox 5 series something, xbox I I don't know. Uh, some prize from contest that I, th- I think he got the idea from, from, from JB or somebody. Uh, somebody released an Xbox contest on Facebook or something. I think we stole the idea. I don't know. Um, for our sales team. And we are constantly looking for ways to re-energize, to refocus. We'll have random spiffs. We'll give stuff away. We'll give out cash. I'll walk in and say, all right, the next person make a sale gets 100 bucks, right? Something, right? So that we're always increasing the focus and the urgency. We had several contests lined up for this year that didn't happen um, for like winning the NBA, a trip to the NBA Finals and the World Series and all this stuff. Uh, we've pay, we're paying them in different ways when they win those contests, but some way to keep their attention, right? To keep the urgency up. And so we'll do like random sales where we're like, you know, we're, 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 do, we're, we're, we're selling this for the next 24 hours and the, the leader wins something, right? To keep them enthused and to keep the focus and the urgency up, all right? So from ever, ever able to work with you or your sales team, I would love to. That's my passion is sales training and in, in, in helping teams get to another level. I've learned a ton over the last few years on doing that in organizations that I used to be absolutely horrible at. Okay, and some of you are probably in, in the shoes I was in and it, it sucks and you want to eventually get out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And let's bring up Nate Offer in a second. Appreciate you guys. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. Rule number one of my eight rules to 8% as I came up with whole new content for this tour is focus on revenue. Most insurance agents wake up, we get in the office, it's 9 a.m., I'm gonna get some coffee, I'm gonna go talk to Susie by the printer, I'm gonna go hang out with Joe.